Hey, girl. Hopefully you don't have the dark hiccups. Oh, you have the hiccups again today. You silly girl. She does. Hey. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't like him either. Hurts your belly, doesn't it? Huh? Does it hurt your belly? Good. Yeah, I bet. If you have them, I bet it's bad. I don't have them. I'm lucky I don't have any right now. <laughs> I used to get them in August, boy. They hit me early. Well, there's a lot going on in the air right now. Wow. Thank you. 
You all got a corsage this morning. Thank you to Kathy Schmidt who made those for you. So Kathy, thank you for that. This morning is Noisy Bucket Offering, so I hope you brought your change to place in the Noisy Bucket back in the narthex. And if you're watching via Facebook Live, uh, the bulletin and the hymns were included in our Wednesday email. So we are ready to get started. So join me in the peace this morning. Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be in our midst. Peace be in our very souls. Peace be the light on our path. Peace be the way of our world. Peace be with you. And also with you. Our video this morning is simply called Mother's Day. Talk amongst yourselves for a second. <laughs> See if we can remedy it. It was a false start. You're breaking back in your way.
Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day, as the video said to all of you imperfect <laughs> mothers out there. I'm sure to those who love you, you're practically perfect in every way. So have a great day. Let's begin worship. Come, let us worship and praise God. The Lord is our shepherd, our guardian, and our God. Celebrate the many ways in which God cares for our lives. Green pastures and silent still waters beckon us and comfort us. Even though difficulties happen in our lives, still God is with us. Even when it seems that the world has nothing to offer but suffering and pain, God surrounds us with God's love and bounty. Surely God's mercy accompanies us on our journey. And we will dwell in God's house forever. Our, our hymn this morning is the Servants of God. Gentle Shepherd, and I'm going to sing it through for us once, and then we can all join in the second time. So you'll have to go back once, Gina.
but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. For the Word of God in Scripture, for the Word of God among us, for the Word of God within us. Thanks be to God. You can just, you can just sit down. Okay. So, you got, can you turn the mic towards you, please? Are we good? Oh, so, Lori and Kayla and Eli, I want you to get prepared, okay? If you could tell me, and I'm going to give you a chance to think about it, okay? I want you to tell me one thing we should know about your mom. Okay, can you turn this up a little bit, Dana? My mic, please. One thing, it doesn't have to be horribly serious, I suppose. Eli, I know your mom's getting nervous already. One thing that we should know about your mom. So, I'm, I'm lucky today, and blessed, my mom is sitting back there with us today. She came yesterday, and uh, I don't, I think when she goes home, after spending time, now not me, because I'm calm, as you all know. But after she goes home, probably after spending time with the boys and my crazy kids, I, I don't, Mom, how long does it take you to recover? Like a week or something? A couple days, I mean, Yeah, that's why she doesn't text me for three days, because she hasn't recovered yet. So we celebrate Mother's Day. So I'm gonna have you go last, Lori, okay? So you want what? You can tell me what's fast. If you, oh Lord, <laughs> nothing. So, so you like you're going to go first, okay? I want you to tell us one thing we should know about Cindy, or five things, and they don't have to be serious necessarily. And if you need me, if you need me to help, I'll help you. Okay. Talking to Mike, she's always there for us when we need her. That's good. So that's true. I agree with you. She's always there. Yeah, so, and you know, Cindy, well, that's okay. I'm going to let you all the hook, Cindy, okay? <clears throat> so, Miss Kayla, what should we know? There could be more than one. What should we know about your mom? Well, I think everybody already knows that my mom is one of the most caring and thoughtful people um, that you could ever know. But I think the thing that nobody else knows is that after dinner, my mom will not sit down until the kitchen is clean and the dishes are done. Oh. Is that what you <laughs> Well, she was answering her best. She said, well. Okay. Anybody else have something they want to tell us about their moms? Okay. My mother never knew anybody go hungry. She always said. That's a, I mean, that's a great thing, right? Anybody else want to say anything about their mom? Ryan, are you going to be okay? Because I'm not used to you sitting there on this side of the church. When I look at them, so I'm going to be okay. I just want to tell my mom that I'm so I just want to tell my mom that I'm so glad that she's my mom. She has taught me so many lessons in life, and um, she's been with me through thick and thin, and just always lifts me up. That's what I want my mom to do. Ditto to that. <laughs> also, a, a, a loving mom that has always been there for us, no matter what, through thick and thin, and. Uh, Grandkids included and great grandchildren. So. Anybody else? It's wide open, man. Anybody else? Uh, I have a lovely mommy that y'all might have. 
that one through Christ. Uh, but that wasn't enough. God decided I needed a Debbie too. And um, she's just, I'm really blessed to have her. And you all know how wonderful and caring she is. Um, but yeah, she would drop anything for me, and she has. So I'm so special and lucky to have her. She got my cover fixed. I didn't know it was a problem. I agree with you guys. Anybody else? Anybody else? Really? My mother was both mother and father to me, and I never, ever felt like I was shortchanged. Wow, that's pretty powerful. Have, have you all seen the pictures? Did you get here early enough to see the pictures? There were some great pictures submitted. I had a lot of fun <clears throat> putting them up there. I laughed at a few, and I said last week, you know, I was told by some people who submitted them, don't tell my mom where you got them. And so the secret is safe with me. If your picture's up there and you wish it wasn't, maybe, I don't know. Okay, Lori. Sure, you can do it. Come on. Come on. We've done this a hundred times. You can do it. We have a long, Lori, we have a long history doing this, you and me. How long? <laughs> 28 years. 28, 28 years. years. You can do this. You just get, you just, there, I'll take this. You just stand here. You see that, Ronnie? <laughs> That's Ronnie's mom. Was it since when I first met her without my mom? And I guess, as I was thinking of one thing and what I could do, and her honor today is go to KJ's ice cream and have a butter pecan ice cream cone. And I'm not full because we spent our last few months together. That was our Sunday afternoon ritual. But my mom started out um, just an average family. Married her high school sweetheart, and he was struck and killed by lightning. And my mom was lucky enough to meet my dad. And she raised four, three daughters and my brother um, from her first marriage. And I, I think in today's environment, one of the things I most appreciate is the fact that my mom did it all. All the laundry, all the cooking, all the dishes. I mean, she taught us. We all knew how to cook. We all knew how to hang out laundry, snack green beans, do whatever. But she was blessed to be able to stay at home and raise all of us. I miss her. That's it. And I was lucky enough to be loved by Lori's mom, too. That's a cool thing. So I, I found all these things to share with you. And I, I haven't picked out one yet about Mother's Day. So I think I'm going to do the second one. It's called the Litany of Thanksgiving, an intercession for Mother's Day. So hear this. Mothers come in many different forms, and today we celebrate them all. Mother and God, we draw on the image of you as one who nurtures, who gathers, who protects. We pray for those women who have nurtured us as mothers and who are no longer with us and whom we miss dearly. We reflect upon those women who have influenced our own lives in so many ways, and we give thanks. We pray for the women around the world who are working long days and nights to raise children right now. We pray for the mothers around the world. We pray for mothers who have fled violence in difficult situations, including refugees, and have been separated from their children or experienced the tragedy of the death of a child. We pray for mothers living in uncertainty and facing unknowns. 
We pray for all the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. Thank God for the soon-to-be mothers. We pray for families where a mother's illness has led to an early death. We pray for those who step in to help and care with nurture of the children, including extended family. We pray especially for children in Ukraine who have taken on the role of mother themselves because their moms have been killed and they're the only children left. We pray for the women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care. We give thanks for these mothers with hearts so big. We pray for these women who have lost a child to death and must carry on. We pray for strength and courage for the mothers who have faced grief and loss. We pray for women who have children have grown and whom they seldom now see. We pray for mothers who are distanced from their children. We pray for all the women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own, but chose instead to mother everyone else. We thank God for the mothers in spirit. We pray for women leaders in Aboriginal communities who seek to provide a protective environment for children and whose commitment is to work for a healthy place for children to live and to grow. We pray for those troubled by the prospect of motherhood, perhaps too soon, and too few resources to care for a child. Mother, mother and God, we offer these prayers to you this day. And hear the prayers of our own hearts in this moment. Amen. Could you, you can go back to the regular slide. There's a quick video I want to show you this morning about Mother's Day. It's called The Spirit of Truth. So Eugenie, you go back to the regular slideshow. Okay, it should be the next slide, don't worry. truth calls us to what matters. She is the go-between, the connective force that moves from one creature to the next. She invites us to know our place in all things. Every inhale, every exhale belongs to everyone and to everything. She is a constant communication that speaks to the soul of all that exists, all that grows, all that dies. She gives the cross systemic separation across species. There is no barrier she cannot overcome. She surpasses human understanding and speaks the truth in ways that everyone can understand. She knows our longings, understands our qualms, and with merely a sigh, releases a prayer to the deep for words. To the dismembered, Having heard God's call to care for others, we must respond. 
Let us not be hearers who forget, but doers who act. And so we will be blessed in our doing. Before we pray together, we continue to pray for Marie and for Dick and for Catherine. We continue to pray for uh, the situation in Ukraine, uh, families in crisis, and there are a couple of folks who I don't have the privilege yet to share um, publicly who are undergoing some significant health issues and really need our prayers. And so when the time is right and I have permission, um, I will share that. But there are two folks specifically, um, especially this week, who really need our prayers. So I invite you, when you pray, um, just to lift those people up. God, you know the deepest desires of our hearts. You hear us. We cry out to you, God, for the many needs in our lives. But specifically, God, we, we cry out for joy for mothers who have embraced us. Some have gone before us and they cheer the way and they, and they line up and they help us in our lives. Others are with us still and continue to guide us. Some of us are little, like Sloan. whose moms love them and teach them for aunts and great aunts and great grandmas and sisters and neighbors. We are thankful, God. Move in us, remind us 
that in all of our life, through all the motions, through all the difficulties, through all the great joys, you are present with us. And we give you thanks. But God, for our world, that struggles these days. For families, for families that are in crisis. In the Ukraine, but across the street and down the road, beside us. Oh God, nurture them where they are. Love them and surround them. For many, God, who need your healing power in their lives, Marie and Dick and Catherine, and for others specifically this week, who need your presence in their lives as they face a health crisis. And we pray, God, for their families and for your mercy and healing power. For our world struggles to find peace. For our neighborhoods and our community and our church, we pray for your guidance and love and grace. Hear our prayers, God. Hear the deepest prayers of our hearts and know us and love us right where we are. As we give you thanks in Jesus' name. And here is God as we pray together the prayer that Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the quiet, Lord, I come, and invited by your song. In the stillness I can hear Jesus calling me.
So this is a Sunday where the secular Mother's Day collides with the Scripture. And it collides in a powerful way because in the lectionary, um, we hear this story from the book of Acts in chapter 9, and it's a story about a person who actually has three names. Dorcas, Tabitha, and does anybody know the third? Gazelle. Did you all know that? She has three names. And it's an amazing story where these two things collide. So hear this. In Joppa, in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which when translated is Dorcas, which in our language is Gazelle, who was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died. And her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, Please, come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken to the upstairs room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened up her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to their feet. Then they called the believers and the widows and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. This is Dorcas, Tabitha, a disciple, the only person in the Bible, in the entire Bible, who is a female disciple of Jesus. The only person named like that. And she is a woman whose life is characterized by doing good. She made clothes for people in need. Her life was characterized by good works, acts of love and grace for the poor. She gave her life to those who were in need. Tabitha is interesting. She must have been a person of wealth because only people of some wealth in those days had a house with two stories. And in the midst of her life, in giving her life for others, she became sick and she died. And of course, all those who were there mourned her death. In a tremendous way, they mourned her death. And then someone had heard that Peter was in Lydda, not far away. And they went and got Peter and said, you've got to do something about this. Now, this is the interesting part of this story. So hang with me a second. You remember when Jesus sent the disciples and he said to them, everything that I've done, you can do. You have the power. Do you remember when Jesus said that? You have the power to forgive. You have the power to heal. And you have the power to what? Raise people from the dead. Wow. Somebody knew that. And so they went and got Peter, who had been given this power from Jesus. And he arrives there, and this really important thing happens in the story with Peter and Tabitha. He was there in the upper room. He sent everybody out, which is often what Jesus did, right? Do you remember when Lazarus died? Jesus sent everybody out. And Peter got down on his knees and prayed. And then he turned toward Tabitha and said, Get up. But then this amazing thing happened that I think is important. 
for us to hear. He said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. But then, did you, did you hear what happened next? She sat up, and then what's the next thing that happened? Peter did this. I don't remember the next. Peter did this. You see this? Peter offered her his hand. And helped her out. Wow. Can you even think about that without some kind of awe just shimmering through you? Peter, tap of the get up. But then he offered her his hand. I remember. It's been several years ago now. My Aunt Betty died, my mom's sister. And I was with her a lot, and her husband, my Uncle Arden, in their final days. And I remember when we got to her funeral, and I was ready to speak. And before I did, I, I looked at her hands. And Mom, like Aunt Betty and all the sisters, you know, they their hands, well, not only do their hands look alike, but if you were with them all, man, they laugh alike. They actually cackle. They actually lay, lay several eggs while they're all together. It's, it's a crazy thing. But I looked at my Aunt Betty's hand. She was 90, right, Mom, when she died? I looked at her hands, and I thought about, in her 90 years, all that had flowed through those hands. Talked about that in her funeral. And said, you know, I remember saying those hands, even though the life has flowed out of them, those hands, those hands did an amazing thing in life. And it's, it's true for us. Tabitha, she was a person of wealth who shared her life by giving to others. It wasn't a secondary thing. It wasn't what she did after work. It was what she did. It was her daily calling. And when she died, when the life ebbed out of those hands, everyone grieved. And the grief was so palpable that they came to Peter with all the clothes she had made and said, see, look what she's done for us. What will we ever do without her? Her life, her hands made a difference in the community. It wasn't what she did when she had time. It was what she did. Look at your hands. Everybody look at your hands. I had to go get give blood um, on Thursday. And I was, they took me back there. And there was two of them. I don't know why I got ganged up on. I'm not really sure. You might have ideas about why I got ganged up on. I don't know. But we were teasing. And then there was a young girl who was putting my information in the computer. She turned around and they were taking blood out of this arm. So I had this hand laid up there. And the girl said to me, you have huge hands. I said, well, look at me, for pity's sake. No, she said, really? Let me see. And she put her hand against mine. This is, so this is post-COVID, so we can get away with this. Well, maybe not, but you know. And so she put, and her hand was like that, and I put my fingers over the top of hers. We, for that couple of minutes that I was there, we talked about her hands and how important they are. All the while, the person on this side took my blood, and I didn't even know it. Now you see, for us in our life, we are taught this important lesson from Tabitha about how we're called to live our lives. 
and how moms live their lives in and through us. Tabitha is beloved in this story because of who she is and what she does. All you have to do is stand up, Kayla. <laughs> So next week, Miss Sloan's going to be baptized. And I'm going to carry her down the aisle. That's not going to happen. And Adam's going to be baptized soon. I'm going to carry him down the aisle too. <laughs> right, Adam? We have, we have a plan for that. He's going to have his roller skates on. Her life, her life has made a difference in the community. And I was drawn to this story of Tabitha for this morning because you know, for some of us, like Lori, and others of you, our moms have gone before us, right? We hate it. We wish they could be with us forever. For some of us, Elaine, your mom was mom and dad both. What an incredible job that is. And their lives, their lives flow through us in amazing ways. Some of us, you know, some of you in the crowd lost your mom suddenly, JD, in a parking lot, right? But yet, in all of that, as we tell the story, I was drawn to this story because in us, you see, in us, the capacity, the capacity to make a difference in the world, to be generous, to be moms. You know, I mean, I don't know if you know, but you know, you might hear Kelsey call Aunt Lori, well, call Lori Aunt Lori. We're not related. But from the time that Dustin and Kelsey, and now Carter and Hudson and Weston and Harper and Odie, because many of Dustin have not agreed on a name yet, so I call him Odie for, for the next boy coming. Their lives, their lives are enriched because of Aunt Lori. Right, Lori? You, you, see, you see, for us, and for, for Tabitha, she affected the wider circle of those around her. And I really believe that that's what we are called to in our lives. Good works were her life. And in us, that's what we are called to. We celebrate mothers today. And we honor them. And we, we relish their memory in us. I think that memory and all of that, it, it's, it compels us, I believe, to live our lives in certain ways. Now, we don't hear from Tabitha after this. We, she probably goes back, well, she no doubt goes back to doing what she was doing, but I found this. I want to just close with this. It's an interview with Tabitha that was written by Marin Tiravasi, who's a friend of mine when I worked for the Ohio Conference. Tabitha is interviewed. No, I've never met Jesus, she said. To be honest, if he came to Joppa, I was too busy to notice. I'm Tabitha. Greeks call me Dorcas. The fact is that everyone is always calling me and calling me and calling me. I'm the kind of person who needs to say yes. I make clothes, I serve meals, I take care of kids, visit sick folks. Stand in the snow outside windows of locked down assisted living facilities. Zoom with women who've lost their husbands and with those who wish their husbands would get lost. I always, I was always tired, really tired for several days, kind of nauseous, pain under my chin. Of course, I kept going. They say my heart gave out. You're curious about the next part, but I'm really not allowed to describe it. But I won't mind 
the day that it comes again. Sure, I'll tell you what happened next. All those folks I helped had a chance to help me. Probably it's the best thing I ever did for them. They washed me, cleaned my room, laid me in bed. This is my favorite part. Dragged Pentecost Peter here to show him the clothes I make and ask him to undeath me. What did he do? He shut the door on all of them, made me sit in bed, and told me to get a life. Oh, friends, on this day and always, we were called to share what we have with each other, to live our lives in, in ways that count. May our, our compassion, our generosity, not be something that happens when we find time. But might it be something like Tabitha, who the scripture says was always doing good and helping the poor. When the rich young ruler, I'll just leave you with this, when the rich young ruler came to Jesus, you remember that story? And he said, Jesus, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you have to keep the Ten Commandments. You have to do this and this and this. And the man says, I do all of that. And then what did Jesus tell him to do? Sell everything you have and give it to the poor and come follow me. And what did he do? He couldn't do it, right? Now, I believe that Jesus, like Tabitha in the call to us in this story, gave this rich young ruler a chance to live his life, a chance to be different. Well, the call of Jesus on us is that very. I invite you to pray. Oh God, drag Pentecost into us. Take us by the hand, sit us up, tell us to get a life. Help us to look at where we are and who you call us to be and, and to take great joy in it and then share it with others. Thank you, God, for mothers who are like Tabitha, who've given us their very lives. Help us look at our hands and use them to reach out and to help others to their feet, as Peter did Tabitha. Thank you, God, for your mercy and grace in all of our lives. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, I invite you to stand and sing, is Come We Who Love God's Name. We're marching to Zion.
The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. We lie down in green pastures and drink from still waters. Our shepherd restores our souls. Even though we walk through the darkest valleys, we fear no evil, for our shepherd travels with us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the forever. So you can be seated. So, women, before you leave, Nancy has these great flowers for you all to take home. So, all the women, come up and get one before you leave. Okay? Let's listen as Jim plays for us the post -lead.